This is the key to Jaguar's baby cab, the Jaguar E-Pace. And with prices starting at 9.3 million Kenya shillings, do you reckon it's a far better bargain as compared to the Mercedes GLA or the BMW X1? Well, let's find out. Starting with the front profile. And the first thing that you see on this front profile is the J-Blade design of these LED adaptive headlamps. And these are borrowed straight from the big brother, the F-Type Coupe that we tested earlier on. Now, bringing that sporty nature into this SUV world makes this car stand out from the crowd. It's not bland, it's not just any other. It gives that aggressive, sportive SUV that now is taking Kenya by storm. Obviously, as you can see, the horizontal grille honeycomb actually gives this car that stance in it. The Jaguar badge and the R-Dynamic badge on it denotes that this is a performance variant of the E-Pace. Obviously, as you can see, the front air dam goes down all the way to denote power and performance. And of course, the subtle bulges on the bonnet that you know that Ingenium power is in it. Now, let's move over to the side profile and see what is different. So, there's black cladding from the bottom and extends all the way to the wheel arc. You know, this car can also do some bit of off-roading. Not bundu bashing, but off-roading. Maram, we can go to the Shags or to the Shamba with ease because it has all-wheel drive technology. And obviously with the subtle lines that Mr. Ian Callum, who did a good job designing this E-Pace, actually made this bulging front fender and of course the lines, which, are, which starts from the J-Blade, connects all the way to the hip line, all the way to another bulging aspect of the rear fender, giving this car that athletic stance. It looks like a bulldog or a cab just about to pounce on prey. That is something so important. Obviously, as you can see, again, the silhouette, sloping roof line, denoting it's a coupe performance variant of this particular vehicle, gives this car just that different look and feel that you probably find with the rest of the German hard. <music> Moving over to the back, and you, the first thing you notice is this J-Blade design that is crawling with LED. It's a signature that this E-Pace has borrowed from the big brother, the F-Pace SUV. And of course, the sloping roof line means that there's a sort of hatchback design on the back. And what Jaguar have done to hide this is to actually merge the spoiler with the rear roof line. So it gives that thing, it's a sporty sort of coupe, but it's very practical for your everyday use. You know, as you can see, where, where actually the window ends is a sharp gap. It's a drop over here just to note that this particular car also is, you know, it's got some, that je ne sais quoi we call, it's different, it's not just swooping and going all the way to the boot. Again, another design cue courtesy of Ian Callum, who did a great job designing the e -pick. Moving over to the lower part of the bumper, and you can see the honeycomb design that has been translated from the grille is now at the rear diffuser. And of course, the twin tailpipes denoting performance and power of the Ingenium engine that we're going to sample later on. But we need to find out if this F-Type inspired e -pick has the same qualities inside. So you've seen from the walk around the J-Blade design that has been the name of the game for Jaguar for the last 10 years, courtesy of the one and only Mr. Ian Callum, who's been the head designer of Jaguar, giving us amazing vehicles from the F-Type, the F-Pace, and so much more. And speaking of F-Type, do you reckon the design language also translates in the cabin of the E-Pace? Step inside, let's have a look. Well, as you can see from the dashboard layout, this is actually inspired by the F-Type, the powerful, high-performance vehicle from Jaguar, and of course, trying to denote that in a crossover mode, giving this car that different appeal that you probably not find on a Mercedes GLA or BMW X1. Obviously, the center console, as you can see, it is slanted lowerwards towards the gearbox, and of course, it is a driver-centric angle towards the driver to give you all the information that you need very easily. So the highlight of that center console is this 10-inch Jaguar Touch Pro infotainment system that actually houses navigation, radio, vehicle dynamics, and of course, you can actually park the vehicle using the park assist that is standard on this particular variant. And obviously, Mr. Murigi, who's a resident tech expert, is gonna give us a lowdown on how all these systems work. Now, right below to do have the climate control. What Jaguar have done, they've gone for the minimalistic way. They use of less buttons and knobs. So basically, you do have just three knobs. So it's dual zone. So the left knob is for the passenger, the right knob is for the driver, and of course, the center one modulates, you know, uh, the 
uh, temperature, cabin pressure, and all those things. So you're able to modulate cabin temperature very easily so that it gives you that ice cold feeling when you're going to Mombasa, or if you want to adjust the seats to give you that seat warming functionality when you're in Limuru. That is amazing. So right below it, you do have some spaces over here. You do have where you can actually put your cell phone, and there's actually a 12 volt socket where you can actually try and you know charge your cell phone. And what they have done actually is again there's that Jaguar skin texture that's on that uh, surface that just gives you that attention to details that Jaguar is actually trying to put. How do you fight the Germans in this category, attention to detail? When it comes to technology, the Jaguar E-Pace has not been left behind. It has loads of technology all over the place, starting of course now with this fantastic in-control touch pro system. It's a 10 inch display that sits flush within the dashboard so it's not one of these systems where the screen is all over the place it's a beautiful system very clear very responsive and let me just go through it now step by step so we are going to start on the left over here we have the reverse camera on higher spec versions like Trevor had mentioned there's a 360 degree camera this of course now being the mid spec SE has not been left behind because over here on the next button we have over here we actually have now front and rear parking sensors as well as a self-parking functionality which we're going to show you a little later in addition to that we actually have navigation built into the car itself so as you can see you have maps that work within kenya that are native to the car so it doesn't matter whether you have um, network access you don't have to be connected to the internet for these maps to work they will work wherever you happen to be in kenya with or without internet access very clear very easy to use and just like i mentioned with this screen being very responsive you can actually pinch to zoom you can move around it is very responsive very clear on the higher spec versions which have the 12 inch driver information display you can actually have the map displayed in the middle of the driver system here like we mentioned this is the se when it comes to Jaguar, it's all about customization. So if you want that, it's available as an option. So you come to the dealer and spec every little thing that you want to put in. Now, going over here to the next level we have over here now is the telephony section over here. Now, this is actually an enhanced phone interface. So it allows you now to use your phone while you're on the move, while keeping your hands on the steering and your eyes on the road. So it actually downloads all of your contacts from the phone and you can make and receive calls using the screen itself or the voice control button that's on the steering wheel. In addition to that, we have, of course, now that beautiful Meridian 10 speaker surround sound system that is also controlled through this. So you can actually use auxiliary, Bluetooth, USB, you're covered basically across the board when it comes to music and actually some videos you can actually watch over here. Coming down to the back of the Jaguar E-Pace and as you can see there's surprisingly quite a lot of space. It doesn't look like it from the outside but as you can see this seat is set to Trevor's driving position. He's 6 foot 1, I'm 5 foot 9 and as you can see there's loads of space for both my knees and for my feet under the front driver seat and you can see space of course being a family car is at a premium trevor showed you what you can do with the front uh compartment over here there's loads of space available here but one of the things i really like about this is that the door cards at the back are big enough for you to put a one liter bottle in each of the doors at the side here you also have of course now an armrest with a cup holder an additional space over here just to keep any valuables that you might want to keep out of sight in terms of comfort we have that beautiful windsor leather in ivory at the back here it's a very comfortable place to sit i would say two adults can sit here very easily at the back without a problem in addition to that we have aircraft style seat backs for any additional storage that you need and 12 volt sockets over here just one of them but in a higher spec version you can actually spec three for the people to charge the devices here at the back Coming round to the back of the Jaguar E-Pace and the first thing I have to talk about is the Jaguar Activity Key. So it looks like a Fitbit or any activity tracker that people are used to having, especially now during COVID, everybody has decided to keep fit. And this is actually going to help you with that because what you do is that allows you to lock the car keys inside the car. So you leave the car key inside the car, hold the key, the watch over here, against the J on the Jaguar and lock the car and it'll actually deactivate the key, allows you to walk go do your stuff go through swimming go take a jog with the key securely mounted to your hand so this allows you of course now because it's waterproof you can do white water rafting zip lining whatever exciting activities that a jaguar owner is going to engage in so when you come back to the car hold the key against the j and you can unlock the car 
So this actually has an automated tailgate and it opens to reveal 577 liters of capacity. What we've done today is put all our cruise luggage inside here so that we can show you that it is very possible to put enough luggage for five people on a short trip to Naivasha or for maybe two people for a long trip to Mombasa inside here and to carry that very well, very easily. Loads of space all over the place to secure the stuff that you need. So you have tie down hooks at the bottom over here for cargo net. If you're into that, there's a hook over here to carry any shopping that you need. As you can see, there's actually a place for you to put your first aid kit, your fire extinguisher, and under here we actually have space for the spare tire and all the stuff that you need to change that. There's also a 12 volt socket to charge any devices that you might have at the back here. And in addition to that, if you are to lay the rear seats all the way flat, that gives you access to 1,234 liters of capacity, meaning that this has all the space for the stuff that you need. But it's time for us to take this on the road and see what this small cat has to offer. So we've seen the Jaguar E-Pace, it's stylish, it's got the looks and of course the cabin is to die for but the most important thing is how does it perform on the road. So today I'm at Kiambu Ring and I'm sampling this particular car. The ingredients of making a good proper sport utility vehicle, the word sport needs an engine. So basically this E-Pace family is actually powered by the engineering family of engines that actually built in Castle Bromwich in England and they are actually two derivatives of each, so two petrols and two diesels. This particular petrol that I'm driving is a 250p, 250 horsepower, or 183 kilowatts. And this is made possible courtesy of a twin scroll turbocharger, direct injection, and of course, variable valve timing. Enough to produce 183 kilowatts and 365 newton meters of torque, and all that power is sent to the four poles courtesy of a nine-speed ZF gearbox which I decide if I flick on uh, dynamic mode right now <laughs> it pulls and pulls and pulls and you can actually tell that this particular car is not joking it's actually very fast and it hangs on to the gears to ensure that you explore the full potential of this engine engine while returning good fuel consumption figures of about 6.9 liters per hundred kilometers that is claimed it is variable based on load, speed, and so many other things. Power is nothing without control. And this E-Pace is loaded with quite a number of gadgets just to ensure that you don't run out of talent. So from the active front, you do have the standard APS and ESP, but the most important is the active torque vectoring by braking. So basically, it varies the amount of power between the axles using the ABS system so that it senses if you lose traction on any wheel, it will automatically intervene and slow down that wheel to ensure that you regain traction and you're able to drive this car very comfortably even on sharp curves and crests like this. And one thing that I do love about this chassis that is built on the Jaguar Land Rover chassis, you'll also find on the Range Rover Evoque and the Discovery Sport, is the fact that the Jaguar engineers have retuned the suspension to ensure that it gives you that sporty ride. So obviously up front you do have McPherson struts, but at the back you do have double leash bones that allows this car to handle so well and feel planted and of course it has that long stroke effect that basically allows you to drive off-road and still feel comfortable it absorbs all the imperfections quite easily and of course even the steering wheel which is electronically uh, controlled just make sure that the nose is pointing at the direction that you intend it to be so faster response sharper response from the gearbox the throttle and of course the steering wheel that is amazing but again if all hell breaks loose, then you can rely on the passive safety features like the six airbags that are strewn across the cabin, of course the five-star safety rating and your seatbelt to keep you safe from harm's way. So guys, we are now off the road in the brand new Jaguar E-Pace. This of course is based on the Range Rover Evoque, which means it has a trick under its sleeve. It actually is pretty good off the road. So obviously we have incredible ground clearance on this car, it's actually pretty good. And we have a four-wheel drive system developed by Land Rover. So you know that it can handle the rough stuff if you need to go into that at the moment. Now it doesn't have Land Rover's terrain response system, but it actually does off-roading pretty well. 
What Trevor mentioned when we were on the tarmac is that it has something they call adaptive drive line. So it's actually a very good four wheel drive system that is built to make sure that you have traction on any surface that you happen to be on. Now, obviously this being a Jaguar, usually that means being able to drive really fast round corners and on surfaces that of course they might have lower traction, like when it's raining or if the road happens to be muddy when you're on the tarmac. However, that four wheel drive system still allows you to maximize your traction when you're off the road. A situation like we are right now, because obviously if you're the kind of person who buys a Jaguar, you probably are doing some really interesting stuff. Like I mentioned, the activity key, you're going off the road to go to a place where you can do zip lining, white water rafting, any activity like that. And that means that you are going to turn off the tarmac onto a bit of a rough maram road like we're on right now. So, so far I have to say it's doing a pretty good job. The fact that it's raised means that the suspension is doing a very good job of damping all of the imperfections on the road. I think it's actually doing a pretty good job of that. We are in a bit of a tricky section. So I'm going to show you now one of the features that this car has, which is specifically built for it to off-road. Now that is what is called all-terrain progress response. Now effectively what that is, is that it is basically a cruise control system from when you're off the road. So what it does is that it modulates, you're actually able to, after pressing the button over here, use the cruise control settings to pick a speed and the car's four-wheel drive system takes care of your throttle input, takes care of the traction, so it knows what each wheel is doing and it makes sure that it provides adequate traction to each wheel and it just allows you to focus on just steering the car and making sure that it's going to a place that is not dangerous. So basically it reduces the activity that you're doing so that you can focus more on steering the car and making sure that you're putting, you're choosing the right line, you're going in the right place and you're not damaging the car or not making things difficult for the people around you. So guys, you've seen what the Jaguar EPS is all about. It's all about the styling and of course the subtle keys that it has inherited from the big brother the F-Type Sports Coupe that we tested with Mr. Murigi some time back. But Mr. Murigi, what do you think about this E-Pace? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that it actually has quite a lot of space. The styling makes it look like it's really small, but there's loads of space for people in the back seat and for the stuff that they need to carry. The other thing now that I have to mention is they've thrown all the technology you can imagine at this thing, making it the perfect car for the growing millennial family. Now, on the road, how much does it cost? Well, prices for the ePay start at 9.3 million shillings. This comes, of course, now with Inchcape's five-year, 150,000 kilometer warranty, whichever comes first. Wow, and we all know that this particular ePay also exists in a space where there's competition. What are the key rivals in this segment? Well, the key rivals in this segment, this segment, of course, now being premium compact SUVs, include the Mercedes GLA, which we have reviewed before on this show, and the BMW X1. Wow, guys, do you reckon that this particular car is far much better as compared to the rivals? Send us your thoughts that's seen in the social media handles below. We'll get back to you next week with the feedback. But before we go, Mr. Miriki, if the audience wants to watch Cars Big Boy Trip, how can they do that? Well, all our previous episodes, including the review of the Mercedes GLA and the F-Type, are available on our YouTube channel. That's CBBT underscore TV should be on the screen below us over here. You can also check us out on all our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as, as I mentioned earlier, now the YouTube channel. Well, signing out, this is Big Boy Trev. This is Mirigi. Drive safe. And be safe.